So, welcome everybody. This is the inaugural pilot episode of Curveballs and Chair Shots. My name is Brandon. I, you know, I don't know if you're watching this on YouTube or if you're watching this or listening to us on SoundCloud or iTunes or Google Play or whatever the hell we're on. Because right now, honestly, I don't even know what's going on right now. I barely even know how to work this thing. It took me a couple days to do this, but this is my illustrious co-host, Dominic. Yes, hello. Yes. So, yes. <laughs> anyways, we're going to be talking about sports and wrestling. I don't know if you guys have seen me, but I'm on the Bullet Cast. I'll leave a link in the description down below. You can check that out, where I talk about wrestling all the time. It's about usually an hour long, but I would like to talk more about sports. As you saw in the last episode, apparently Mitchell and Philip aren't very big sports fans like I am, so I'm Ooh. like, you know what? Fuck it. We're, I'm gonna do my dang, own damn podcast. You're just going off out of my really? Yeah, because we are all a right. unleashed podcast. Because the Bullet Club cast, whatever the name is, <laughs> they're trying to tear me down and they're trying to put the chains on me, tell me I can't curse and everything. And I want to cuss because, you know, there's no such thing as a bad word, just bad intent. I mean, Stone Cold yeah. cusses all the time. We can get on that for another day. So, would another you like day. to say anything, Dominic? Before no, we I mean, start, I'm just ready to get going. I mean, I'm hoping that uh, I can provide. Some in performance depth. enhancing audio there as the modern day Mamba Raja Bang. would say. Is that what you do? Bang. Yeah, that's at the end, Dominic. Oh, sorry. Shouldn't too quick. Too quick. Yeah, taking my gimmick. Sorry. So, we're going to start off with some wrestling talk since I know that's what the people on YouTube like. So, we'll talk about Neville walking out. Yeah. So, Neville appara- allegedly walked out of Raw after seeing that he was going to face Enzo Moore in a non title match and lose. What do you think about I, that? I mean, you kind of have to agree with Neville a little bit. I mean, you're probably, if you're not the best, you're one of the top cruiserweights probably since, I mean, what, Rey Mysterio or, you know, Eddie or anybody else. So, I mean, you got to kind of give it to him that, why are you going to job to Enzo? He's been putting up with some shit lately. Exactly. I mean, I, mean, I don't even know why he lost to Zawa in the first place where it was just, he lost and then he got it right back. It, that to me was very stupid, but I mean, I kind of, I kind of agree with him. But you know, going the whole CM Punk approach of just walking out, uh, but this, <laughs> this can kind of elevate his stature on the indie scene because he kind of has that CM Punk mentality. Where he's like, you know what? I don't need the man to succeed. True. Because Neville honestly probably can make more money in the indie scene that he can in WWE because he probably will go to PWG. He'll go to New Japan. He can go around the world and do whatever the hell he wants. I mean, you can look at like Cody. When Cody left, he's but, you know, everywhere. N- Neville will actually put on good matches on, like, Cody. <laughs> Hot takes. Bam, bam. But, I mean, because if you've seen Pac on the indie scene, his um, matches that he had is just so much better, and he just does so much more shit than he does yeah. in WWE. He does all the flippy doos and all that stuff. So if you think, you know, Will Ospreay and Ricochet can do some yeah. flippy stuff, Pac can do some stuff, too. Which, I mean, those are going to be great matches, hopefully, coming I, up soon. I mean, I don't know, because right now he's not actually released yet or anything any news has actually came out so i don't so i don't know if he's gonna like maybe come or get released and then the 60 day non-compete runs out so hopefully by 2018 Mm. he will have a match outside of wwe and hopefully that'll be in a pwg environment that'll be fun i don't think he's gonna leave i think wwe would be stupid very stupid to let him go i think they should do if it means give him back the title if that means enzo gets released i mean i'm much rather lose enzo than neville but but Enzo be selling them T-shirts and the wigs. The kids love Enzo. True, that's true. But I mean, I think I think Vince himself would be stupid to let him go. So, but I think it's kind of a pissing match at this point where probably where Vince is like, you know what? We don't need him anyways. It's the cruiserweights. Who cares? Even though they haven't pushed the cruiserweights lately with Monday Night uh, Football coming around, so they kind of put the real main event with the big dogs with Roman Reigns and the Shield and everything like that. They kind of put them at halftime so more eyes can get on the product, and then they put the cruiserweights in the traditional main event setting where it's the last match on the show of the three-hour Braun comes in and destroys everyone, and it doesn't even matter. Well, that's what, that's what Braun does. Braun comes in and destroys the cruiserweights, which is a whole other topic for a whole other day. Jumping ahead, but, sorry. So anyways, <laughs> so Neville walks out. Do you think it's a work, or do you think this is a real story? You know, I if it was me, I would I would probably done, be done with that company. So I, I think it's real. I'm thinking it has to be real. But you I'm, but it's, I'm it's, hoping it's not. It's always a work. It's always a work in wrestling until it's, it's not. But anyways, so another rumor that probably doesn't have any real thing, but we're going to talk about it because yeah. we're going to talk about it on the Bullet Cast, is Conor McGregor maybe joining WWE for a match at WrestleMania 34 down in New Orleans. Mm. 
Ronda Rousey probably is going to have a match yeah. there. Is Conor McGregor going to have a match there? You got uh, Ronda and Shayna, and then Conor can be their manager or something like that. They're going to have the four horsewomen against the four horsewomen. I'm just saying, that would be all. I mean, you can throw Conor in there, and then you have a mixture. Conor versus Brock Lesnar for no damn reason. Conor versus, nah. Conor versus Finn Balor, Battle of the Irishman. Ah, that'd be pretty cool. Yeah, but I, I don't think that there's any traction to this. I don't, because this, whatever, the Sun, it's like the European National Enquirer reported this, and Dana White said that he texted Vince, and Vince had no idea that this was even a thing, so. I mean, I think it, I think if it is true, he's going to have a hard time training, because you saw him when he boxed Mayweather, he was still trying to do MMA moves. I think not landing certain things, punches and kicks, I think it's going to be a little too difficult for him to... But you can just kind of stick to just the doing judo, do, yeah, yeah, just doing okay. judo throws true, and not true. punching, even though Connor's main game is standing up and punching and boxing, but... But it's true. But, I mean, yeah. Ronda, I mean I don't, we don't know what Ronda Rousey's going to look like in the ring, even though her base is more wrestling based with the yeah. judo, yeah. so that might translate better than just strikes, but... And Shayna's already a wrestler, so and, I mean, you don't... Shayna Baszler, finalist in the Mae Young Classic. Who lost, thank you very much. That's why I said finalist and not winner. Shout out Kyrie Sane. So anyways. I want Mia, uh, I want Mia to win, so. Mia? Yeah. Alright. Isn't it the, what the, domestic violence or whatever? Yes. 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 There she you was go. Jade in Impact, and I loved her, so. But Asian persuasion out here. Okay, moving along. Apparently, Jinder Mahal might be injured. We'll have a shoulder injury. Has been taking not uh, taking some time off, but he wasn't on SmackDown today. You know, I he wrestled the dark match, but he didn't wasn't even really wrestling. This is where he we just kind of bored because I want to hit that button that just says like "get the hell out of here" or something because nobody. Likes you don't him. like Jinder Mahal? I I. But we can... need the we need the Indian market, Dominic. Yeah. Uh, before Jinder, you had Cena went over to India. You had I remember I remember watching it multiple times Cena. Uh, I'm not going to say attitude. I'm going to say he F-U'd Kane through a table at a press conference. So you have all these other people who are over. Why do you need an Indian champion? So I don't know. I, Jinder Mahal was over in India today or this week, apparently doing some media because they're having the tour in December, mm -hmm. which I don't understand why you, you don't like exactly what he said. You don't need an you Indian have, champion to be over in India. of talent that's over that you can put the title on. You don't even need to have a title on him. On, you know, Cena, Styles, Orton, Shinsuke, whoever. They, sh they should have just flip flop. AJ should be the WWE champion. Jinder should be the US champion. Because when you're the WWE champion, there's so much more pressure and, like, expectations well, on you than on the US champion. You're the face champ. of that company at that, at that moment. Ex in time. Exactly. But, so. I mean, we've kind of divulged into a different situation with there's just the Jinder Mahal in general <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> instead of actually talking about his injury which apparently is a shoulder injury he's wearing like the kin very important. the kinesiology tape on the house shows but then he doesn't wear it on TV he wasn't on Smackdown technically he doesn't really need a title match until December I think is when the next like real pay-per-view is because they have Survivor well, Series in November like a, isn't it like a 90 day thing you like you can't compete in yeah but they days. do they I mean Brock Lesnar Brock Lesnar doesn't appeal to that and he does the Jinder Mahal still doing the house shows apparently, and they have the Survivor Series match in November, so yeah. you can kind of put that off so he doesn't have to put the title on the line. And then I don't know exactly what the December pay per view is because there's just way too many pay per views back to back now these well, days. Let me ask you. Well, uh, no, another uh, that my question is another topic for another day. Never mind. I'll put it on the put, put it on yeah, the script. Or, 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 All right, yeah. don't don't forget about it. I probably will, but it's somewhere in there. This is really awkward, but who cares? We're yep. moving along. So we got the Raw recap. We got the Shield coming back together. The second annual Mizzies. Miz just gives awards to his brethren and his friends. And the Shield or Roman Reigns comes out, and the Miz cuts a promo about the rumors about the Shield coming back together. And then Roman is like, "What rumors?" And then they come out, <laughs> and the Shield, you know, big dog, they put the fist up, and then they just whoop everyone's ass. You know, I, I, I know we've talked about this off the air, but when. Uh, when you told me that, you know what, it would have been better if Roman had different music than always having that S.H.I.E.L.D. theme. When he came out, I was kind of like, alright, I was expecting that Seth and Dean to come out with him all automatically. Exactly. But when they come out separately, it kind of gives me like the, the feeling that they're not 
the shield. They're just just partners. They're in- three best friends. It's, well, it's it's kind of like it gives me the. Um, you remember the first time that Randy Orton Edge teamed up like four or five years ago, whatever, when they were rated RKO, and they first came out by themselves. Edge came out, then Randy Orton came out. I feel like that's the the way it's gonna happen. It's gonna be not three people coming out the ring at once. It's gonna be one, one, one. And to me, it's not the Shield. I mean, Vince is just using every little trick in the book that he can to give Roman all the energy and the oomph he needs to be the top dog. And it just doesn't, it's not working so far. I mean, it's sort of working just because anybody who gets put in that top spot will get merchandise sales and get the crowd behind him. But when you have the Shield music, he still keeps the vest. That's kind of the, re- like, that's yeah. honestly one of the reasons people probably resent him. He still him. does that little thingy, whatever. Yeah, I mean, because he's basically the Shield. He's still in the Shield yeah. while Seth and Dean broke off and are doing their own thing. And if they had kept the Shield music away for however long it's been, what, three, four years at this Stuff point? Like that, yeah. And we heard it for the first time tonight or even at TLC when they walked, hopefully they walked down, that would have been better. you know, walked down the crowd and every, everyone's wearing the vest. We've never seen them wear the vest yep. since then. But I know uh, Roman doesn't have the strongest like abs and uh, chest muscles. So I think that's probably why he still kept the vest because he's, I don't know if he's self-conscious or just Vince likes the look and he can it's sell the vest part of the look to the kids, sell, vest, so, yeah. sell it to the kiddies, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Anyways, that I, I don't that's think so funny. Sh- I don't think you'd be saying doing this in kitties, but that's just me. That's uh-huh. just my well, opinion. Awkward turtle. So they set up the TLC match with the Bar, Sirius and Cesaro against the Miz. I don't really like this as a trios match because like the Bar and the Miz, they've been together for what like two, three weeks at this point, and they're going up against the Shield. It's just not really. But isn't Braun in it? I was going to get to that. Well, I'm building up. It's okay. a raw recap. we got to okay. talk about it in order, even well, though I'm pretty sure it's not in order because I just kind of wrote everything that well, down because, that I remembered. But, but, but see, what it was, though, was that all happened. Then they attacked Braun at the Braun and Matt Hardy match. Then they booked the match. So technically, you're already going off course. You know what? If we should check the tape, I'm pretty sure they advertised the three-on-three match, and then they put Braun in, in the match. Roll the tape. Roll Comment the tape. down below. Roll the tape. Comment down below who's right. Roll the credits. If anybody's watching this. Probably not. Probably not, but you know. Yeah. Who cares? It's it's a work in progress. So, I guess we could just jump right into them adding Braun to the mix. Why do you think that's a, a good idea? I don't for know. A, a handicap four on three match. Mm, I think they need to. I think either A, they need to drop somebody. Be it. I mean, I don't, I don't think they should drop the Miz because. The well, I, I honestly think they should have dropped the Miz. I think it'd be better. You can still have the 4-3 and three dynamic where you can have Sheamus, Cesaro, and Braun go up against the Shield, but then you have Miz in the corner just, you know, being the chicken shit heel that he is where he just sits there with his suit on, but then when they're in danger, the Miz, the Miz comes up and jumps him because it's a TLC match, so there's no disqualification. So is, you can is, just do whatever it, you is want. Is it a TLC match or is it a, another? Is it just chairs or it's actual TLC? It's a TLC match, Dominic. Watch the show. I didn't watch that part. I'm sorry. There's only so much I can look on my phone. I'm sorry. Shame. So, we got that. We can get into predictions next week. Mickey James and Alexa Bliss go mm-hmm. back and forth, and they basically talk about how Mickey James is old, mm-hmm. which I don't understand. Mm-hmm. Even though mm-hmm. she's old for a woman's wrestler perspective because she's 39 or 38 at this point when everyone's like in their Damn, late... Damn, she's fine. Everyone in their late 20s, Dominic. Keep your mind out of the gutter. We're trying to stock strictly business here. Uh, yeah, keep going. Got her. Sorry. Okay. So, anyways, what do you think of the build of Mickey James and Alexa Bliss? I mean, I think it's it's my opinion. I look at it this way: you have Mickey, who is a season a really seasoned vet. Not not trying to. It's not a dig at her. I mean, she's owned. It's everybody knows Mickey James. Alexa Bliss, on the other hand, she's still up and coming a little bit, in my opinion. Um, I think this is going to be somewhat of a last hoorah for Mickey. I think she's going to be pretty much done after, if not this one, maybe she has another, maybe another storyline. Um, but I, don't, I, you know, it's going to be kind of, it's going to be good to see. They're, I mean, I feel like this is just too reminiscent of the Piggy James angles where they just talk about how fat Mickey James is. They run the promo package. Of, but now she's saying they're old instead of fat. Yeah, I mean, they run the promo packages. They did the old-timey kind of vaude villains type thing where, you know, old 20s video of 
Mickey James wrestling back at WrestleMania 20, whatever. You know, against... I think it's 23, I think. Against Trish Stratus. Yeah. And just basically talking about how old she is, and it makes no sense, because Mickey James... When you look at Mickey James, yeah, you you know she's older than the other ones, but you don't think, you know, she's the Undertaker in her mid-50s, yeah. just with a crippled hip and shouldn't be out there. <laughs> but it is what it is. TLC coming up. I don't think Mickey James is going to win. Uh, I agree. I feel like this is just kind of a transitional match where they've been building up this Nia Jax match forever, and they just kind of tease it, and then they just bring it back, which makes no sense to me. Yeah. To me. <laughs> but it is what it is. So Bray Wyatt promo. Bray Wyatt finally brings out Sister Abigail yeah. in some weird little promo. What would you think about that? Uh, I, I, no, I don't like it at all. Well, I really do not like it at all. Why don't you like it? I feel like they... Sh- you know, you can cheat. You you can you can say it's you know I absorbed her power, her soul, whatever you want to say it is. But in my opinion, you you, you need to have a, a female or a male. You know, don't know how WWE is with you know transvestites and whatnot. But you know, transgenders, whatever, Dominic, it's the same thing. PC, yeah. we're out here in California. You need to learn the culture, Dominic. Anyways, um, no, I feel like they need to have that character as actual flesh and blood, not I absorbed her powers. To me, it's not, it, it's just not going to go over as well if there's not that actual person there. The promo itself with Bray Wyatt, I was fine with, just because that's kind of Bray Wyatt's, that's Bray Wyatt's character. Yes, it was a, on a yes, it was a stupid promo. Thank it was you. weird. I said he kind of sounded like a droid in Star Wars with the <laughs> overmodulated voice, and he had whatever you call that thing, the, little, the, like, the veil. Yeah. The veil over his face, he has some face paint on, and I assume he's going to come out like that at TLC against the demon. I don't know if it's going to be demon versus Abigail. But the per- the thing I had the most problem with was Finn Balor. He had his promo after that promo with, one, you know, one of those robot ladies, Charlie Caruso, I think, and he just is selling it. Just he's like, oh man, I don't, I don't know what I'm gonna have to do. That's some scary stuff. And it's just Finn, come on, just be a man and be like, that wasn't just some dumbass Friday the Thirteenth bad CGI stuff. I mean, it's obviously he, like he should be like obviously. Sister Abigail isn't overtaking Bray. You can kind of go the psycho route that he has these different minds and voices in his head, even though that's Randy Orton's gimmick. But but I mean, how, so, Finn shouldn't be selling that he's scared of Bray. I mean, but if he doesn't sell it, then it's kind of just another shitty fucking match. You don't have to. I mean, you can sell that he's crazy, but you don't have to sell that that it's you're, Sister that, Abigail. No, and... you can sell that that he's. That Bray's crazy, but you don't have to sell that you're scared of him. You can just be like, man, Bray Wyatt, he's getting, he's in a different zone right now. Sure. I don't know what I'm going to have to do to beat him, but he's kind of, he's. I don't know why he thinks putting on some paint, even though that probably isn't very good for Finn because that's his gimmick too, but I, you can ward it differently to where you kind of, you put over Sister Abigail, but you also kind of take it away and just be like, Finn, or Sister Abigail is not really a thing. I'm I, just ready and for I'll this to be it. over. I'm sorry. I'm just ready for it to be over. I don't know if they're building to a Finn Brock Lesnar match, which I don't. I thought they might have been doing a TLC because I thought Brock was supposed to be a TLC, but apparently he's not since we're a week away from that. Survivor Series is coming up. Don't know if they're gonna have a Universal Championship match for that. If they're just gonna do tag team, you know, Raw tag team against SmackDown tag team. I would love to see a Finn and Brock Lesnar match. I th- would love to see how they match up, but. I love Finn Balor, but I don't think Finn Balor is winning that match because it's all building to the big dog against Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania. Now you know you're jumping ahead, pal. I'm not talking about it. Well, you're you're. It all builds together. It's gonna be a triple threat match, man. What are you talking about? We'll get to that later. Yes, we got a long time. So we talked about Neville walking out. The original plans, if everything is to be believed, was Neville was supposed to face Enzo in a non-title lumberjack match. He walks out. Things have to change. Kalisto gets put in a title lumberjack match. And then even though Kalisto is supposed to have a title match at TLC, they put the title match. They put the title on Kalisto. He talks about how he loves Rey Mysterio. And this is for Eddie Guerrero on his 50th birthday. He wins the title. Everyone's happy. He gets hoisted up like Bret Hart. Your thoughts? Yeah, um, I'm hoping to God Neville comes back now, but no, it, it, I, I feel like with Kalisto being champion, at least it gives you more of, like, that is cruiserweight wrestling. 
is Kalisto. Enzo is, I'm a gimmick wrestler, and I'm here just to sell t-shirts and get my ass beat. So, I mean, I'm, I'm hoping he can put some good matches on with, with a couple of the other guys. I mean, I really do like Alexander. I really like him. He's um, so underutilized, it's not even funny. Another, another talent that can go back to the indies and still be, if not making the same, maybe it'll even... I mean, I don't more. know how much Apollo Crews weighs, but if Apollo Crews was on the indie scene right now, he'd be killing it too. He's so underutilized. But, but he doesn't have the character. He's just, he's just because he's he, just he's a smiling black guy. Yeah. Let's be honest. He's just he's just there, ready to wrestle. Ready. To, I'm, he's a team player. And let's then he go. loses to Elias like three weeks in a row. But it's one of those things where, you know, going back to Kalisto, he is the definition of cruiserweight wrestling. He's agile. He's fast. He's quick. Fast and quick, the same thing, huh? But yeah, know, I, I knew what you're talking about. Yeah, you know, you know, you know. I but, was, I got it. Um, <clears throat> but it's one of those things where. Enzo does not ca- all Enzo is is low body weight. But that's that, it. but I mean that kind of fits in with the gimmick is you think cruiserweights are just going to fly around and do flippy stuff when the heavyweights are doing that. Kevin Owens is damn near almost, you know, 300 pounds and he's doing cannonballs and jump almost jumping off a cell and stuff like that. Yeah, but the whole point of cruiserweight is And your... Finn and Finn Balor's a heavyweight, but he's probably lighter than most of those cruiserweights. I think I think that was uh I was re- reading something a long time ago where it's like Shane Helms was cruiserweight and Mysterio was heavyweight, and he out, outweighed Mysterio by like 50 pounds or something like that. It's like it's kind of point. You, you got all these backward. I mean, components. it's not a it's not a real sport, so we don't know if everyone really weighs hey, under 205. It's real to me. Well, you know, this is why we're talking sports and wrestling because wrestling is a sport. It's just not a real sport. Sports entertainment. <clears throat> we're not. We don't say those two words together. Oh. We can talk about sports. We can talk about entertainment, but there's no such thing as sports entertainment because all sports is entertainment. You're lucky Vince isn't here because Vince hot, would hot would, takes would strangle. What is boy, sports entertainment? Harlem Globetrotters is sports entertainment. Halftime shows with the dog riding a unicycle <laughs> is sports entertainment. <laughs> That's funny. But anyways, That's so Kalisto, new champ. I thought they would just have Kalisto be a interim challenger for Enzo until uh, Gargano comes oh. after Champa. They do their little yeah. run down there in NXT. Because you can, you need that. That's a money match down there in NXT. And Gargano, I, I love Gargano. I don't know if he can be a top tier main event heavyweight wrestler, but he definitely can be the Austin Aries type wrestler at the Cruiserweight division where he has that uh, cachet with the internet fans and everyone knows how great he is. You can also have him be one of the greatest ever intercontinental or. United States too. But I know. Garga- I, I love Gargano, but he is he is small. At least Finn has the height, sort of. Gargano is just kind of tiny. Yeah. Well, I know. We'll si- I know sizes and everything, right, Dominic? Wow. But you know, really, it is what it is. Damn. I know. Hot takes out here. Damn. Don't worry. The, we'll get the original name was High Spots and Hot Takes. Maybe we have to change it back. I I don't know. But I don't you know. know. I, we honest, this is gonna be unnamed right now. We it's honest. Just, it's just no, gonna be the untitled yes. podcast. We honestly don't be know. Someone's we can't a dick we, to someone else right now. We, we can't really think of what the names are right now. Oh, jeez. What? I was talking about height, Dominic. Yeah. Oh. Mm-hmm. Big Big okay. So SmackDown, Hell in a Cell thoughts. Yes. I did the instant analysis with Philip. We talked a little bit more about it on the Bullet Cast. Just your overall thoughts. New Day. Um, Uso is obviously best match of the show. Hundred percent agree with that. Um. You know, I I was really hoping that uh, the Ziggler and Rude match would be a little bit. I'm not gonna say better, but I, I wish Ziggler maybe would have won that match instead. No. Just because. Oh, oh hell no! I mean, no, 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 I'm not. Ziggler is probably gonna be gone from the company in the next 30 days, apparently. apparently. If the internet is tr- if the internet is true. Is the internet true? Of no. course it is. That's helicopter, huh? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> this is why we we do this inside the room and not outside, like what you wanted to. They probably can't even hear it because we have these microphones, these headsets on. These, anyways. these nice, expensive headsets. Mm-hmm. Shout out Amazon. Yes. Shout out Prime. Yes. Can you get back on track? Get back to us. With um, yeah, but I do wish Ziggler would have won that match. I would have. I, I felt that would have been. Um, it, they could have built. They could build around Ziggler doing a dirty, pulling tights, and Rude could have. You know, they could totally build on that. Um, the other thing I would say is. And I think you said this on the instant analysis. Whenever you put Shane in a type of match where there's something high he can jump off of, you know he's always going to jump it. The Shane McMahon matches are just built around the high spots. That's what it was. That's what you said. But 
Um, all in all, I thought that was, I would say, a, a decent match. Um, I feel like Owens should have jumped off the top instead of just teasing it. But, but that's kind of the heel thing of he talks a big game, but when it comes down to it, he's not going to jump off the cell. He's, yeah, he's but, a coward. But you, you, you could also have done the, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump, I'm going to jump, I'm going to jump. And he gets too nervous, and at the last minute, he's like, you know what, fuck this, I'm going to do it. He does it. Shane moves, crash lands, and then that's and then Sammy could have saved him there. But I did call the Sammy Zane heel turn on the bullet cast. Shout out. I'm a smart guy. Shout out to yourself? I know. Shout, shout out, out to shout yourself? Out, shout out to myself. Jeez. I know. Put myself over. You always got to put yourself over because nobody else will. Anyways. So, yeah. you thought... So, how did Okay. Overall, how did you think the hell, the Shane-Kevin Owens match... Hell in a Cell was because apparently it was forty minutes, which it felt like. I mean, I it knew it was. Longer. I knew it was long. I didn't know it was that long. Um, I felt like they were on top of the cage for like twenty minutes. Like that could have been the whole match just right there. I mean, overall, you're right. It was too long. Um, did it have to be long? Yeah, I think it had to be that long. It's I mean, because when you're climbing up the cell, that's gonna take a couple minutes there. And then you also have to do the spot where. You know, like you like you said, he's a heel. He has to contemplate the jump. And a, lot then, of, a lot of stalling. Exactly. Um, but, you know, it, it was longer than needed to be. But it, all in all, I think... I mean, if I was giving it an A to F rating, it was either a... It was probably like a close to a B minus, maybe. I wouldn't even give it a B or B plus. I just think, like, there's a couple things of that match that could have changed. But I think all in all, it was pretty, pretty decent. I think if it wasn't for the Usos New Day match, I think this probably would have been a really bad pay per view in my eyes. Hmm. I mean, nothing I said in the instant analysis, nothing was really terrible, but just nothing really stood out for me. God, the, I wish I wish that Divas match was. I mean, sorry, women's match, women's. Match. I thought they were gonna build to a Carmella Cash in the way they were working over Charlotte's knee, that she would maybe pull it out at the end, and then maybe Natalia kind of yeah. attacks her knee, kind of what happened with Ziggler and Del Rio, but Carmella or Charlotte didn't even win the match, and then Charlotte... Well, yeah. Charlotte did win the match by disqualification. But I just felt like... I felt like that match could have been 100% better, and they I just... Have, I felt like they were, they were building to something. They, You gave them five more minutes, five, ten more minutes, which this ma- this show on its own was three and a half hours long, which it didn't need to be that long. Yeah, I but, mean... You know, there's you can, always you can take pay-per-view. You know, you can take 10, 15 minutes out of the Shane match and put 10 minutes onto that match, and it probably wouldn't have made the show better. Yep. But Did you even talk about the WWE Championship match? No, because Gender I'm Mahal. not gonna. I'm not. Gonna, I don't want to bring up any sore spots for you right now. I mean, I mean, I've talked about this various you, times already. I, I was with you when you saw that match and you went face first and you started crying. I'm, I did start crying. A tear ran down my face. Not yeah. really. I haven't cried in forever. I'm a man. I'll make you cry. I'm a man, man. I'm anyway. a man's man. Shout out William Regal. But no, um, it's just one of those things where WWE fucked up again. I'm sorry, they fucked up. I mean, you, you have. A world-renowned talent as Shinsuke Nakamura, and you, you, you know, fucked it up. You fucked up. They need to own up to it. You could have. I mean, like, um, I think, I think I was reading somewhere where. Get the cite your sources here, Dominic. Cite my sources. Get the I, cite your sources. I'm gonna say it was. I don't know, but it was they. They tagged uh, Mahal as a two-time WWE champion. So, either someone's fucking it up somewhere, or he's dropping the title before they go to India. Uh, you, uh, like you can put the I don't know why you don't put the title on Shinsuke. You can put the title on Shinsuke, and if you really want, you can have Jinder Mahal winning in in India. First first night back in first day in India. I, I, yeah, like you, uh, like they've done this before. Like back in the '80s, somebody loses it, and then you get it back a couple days later. Which yeah. I don't. I'm not a big fan of that because, especially now in the internet age, you can actually track that and people know what happens when yeah. title matches go on and people win and lose it, but. Just put the title on AJ, please. I've lost. I've kind of lost faith in Shinsuke. Shinsuke kind of has the rep of kind of not being lazy, but just kind of going with the motion, not go, not turning it up when he, when he, yeah. you know, when he doesn't have to. So on the house shows and on these other matches, he just kind of coasts on his laurels. And I've seen him in New Japan. I stayed up five o'clock, <laughs> four o'clock in the morning. I saw him live at Wrestle Kingdom, and it just blew my mind. I was like, oh my god, this guy is amazing. But that Shinsuke to this one is. Money. But I still have faith because when they when the Money in the Bank match and they teased that AJ Shinsuke feud or the face off, that place was going crazy and I was just like, all you wanted to do, you didn't even want to see them have a match, you just wanted to see them like fight for like five seconds. 
and it was amazing. So if you, I don't think the, I mean, I want them to have that match, but I don't know if they will. I don't know if they want that match because if that match happens at WrestleMania, they can. That might overshadow the Brock and Roman match, which they don't want that to happen, of course. So then was would well then that match is never going to take place then. I know because that thing would just blow it out of the water. You have, you have a SummerSlam. Because yeah, I feel yeah. I, early early prediction AJ Styles is winning the Royal Rumble. I'm saying it right now. Really? I'm locking it in because I don't think Roman should win the Royal Rumble. Because if you're trying to get Roman over, just winning don't it is do just not hurt him. do not yeah don't have him win the Royal Rumble again. Because what this is going to be like the fourth year in a row that people hate the Royal Rumble, and the people uh, who won it last year. I mean this year, this oh, well, this year this yeah. year was Randy Orton, and the only reason Randy Orton got a pop is because they put Roman Reigns in last and then at number thirty. Yeah. And then last year was Triple H, and yeah. okay, yeah. I can, yeah. And then, and then yeah, Roman, Roman Batista, Sheamus, or I don't know. It's a long, long history with the Royal don't Rumble. People love the Royal Rumble, but it's probably it's a love hate relationship right now. So CM Punk returns Royal Rumble, calling it. Yeah. So Hell in a Cell fats. It was fine. It was, it, you know, it is what it is. So Even finally, get to SmackDown. We got new the Newsos, Usos and New Day. I just came up with that by myself because I'm a smart guy. They become, you feel happy about that? I know they. Yeah, you probably shouldn't. They, I just, you know, I tripped over my words and I ran with it. Okay. <laughs> so the <laughs> Usos and the New Day, they kind of become friends. They kind of give each other some respect. Like, you know, we went through hell yeah. in a cell, and we we've done what we had to do. We're gonna step away. We're just gonna, but we we run the tag division. And who's the first person to come out? Mojo Rally, who just lost a pre-show match, and he's gonna come out to talk about how he deserves a title shot, which makes no damn sense. Luckily, yeah. Gable and Benjamin came out to, to set him straight. But yeah, um, they need to break up. They were teasing the hype brothers, hype bros. Sorry, bros. break up. They and need to break them up. They were they were teasing the Zack Ryder heel turn, and I don't know if they realized like, man, we have no babyface tag teams right now except for the New Day and Gable and Benjamin. So, and we have a new Breeze Dan- Breeze Dan- or whatever. They don't even they don't wrestle. We, this is like the first time we've seen them wrestle in like three months. They've just been doing those. Fashion file gimmicks, where, I, yeah, I'm, which I love the fashion files. I'm not gonna lie, they teased us with Pulp Fashion this week, and they didn't give it to us because Vince just books on the fly and probably didn't know what he was doing on SmackDown on Sunday. I mean, once again, you have the plethora of talent, and you're just kind of like sticking to these people. It's it's kind of, you know, once again, you're just dropping the ball. I th- I think they should just put the SmackDown. They should have the SmackDown tag division, the Raw tag division. Just put them on one show. Put the one, ta- one title. Yeah, put the. They need to take away so many titles. You don't need two tag titles. You don't need two women's titles. You could take away the U.S. title, because mm-hmm. title and you can take away the Universal title. Titles need to mean stuff when you have, like, what half of your roster. Like, how many titles are there really? What eight? There's two tag titles, two women's titles, two main titles. There's the U.S. title, the Intercontinental Championship. There's the Cruiserweight Championship. That's nine titles. Nine titles out of, whatever, 50 people that are on the roster, which is not, you know, that's... It's too easy to get a title shot these days. Yeah, but, I mean, you still... If, okay, if you're on SmackDown, but back in, what, 2004 or whatever, and you had, on SmackDown, you had the tag titles, the championship, United States, and you're a, a woman, you have to go to Raw to get it? Yeah. So you're fighting on SmackDown. You have nothing to fight for. That's why I'm saying you put the women on one show and you put the tag teams on one on another show. But the problem with the Raw being three hours is you need as many bodies as you can get, which is another topic. Sir, are you, are for, we're just s- pushing all these topics down the road for another day. We're kicking the kicking the can. One last question on this real quick. Are you saying they should go back to the Super Show when it was all in one? Are you saying no? I like I like the brand split. Okay. But they sh- they should. I mean. I know it's hard if you're gonna have two tag, if you're gonna have two divisions to have yeah. two titles, but they should just have one main champion, one universal champion, or one WWE champion. What the hell is that? <laughs> Turn your phone off, Dominic. You owe everybody a beer now. Jeez. So, anyways, uh, I now I just lost my train of thought. Sorry. Let's talk about the titles. They should just be one WWE. The WWE champion could bounce back and forth. Pick it up. Because I love the. Brock Lesnar, where he was the undisputed champion, he would go back and forth around SmackDown, so you can have one title, you know, you can have one person, they have a number one contender match on one pay-per-view, and then have a the actual championship match on the other pay-per-view, and the champion, it's a whole back and forth thing. Yeah, but, I mean, you also gotta realize that, you know, one person goes down. I mean, Jinder Mahal is a WWE champion, for God's sakes. <laughs> 
If there was only one title, I guarantee you Jinder Mahal would not be the WWE champion. But they're going to India. They need it. Exactly. And Brock Lesnar not even there, so it makes it even worse. It just makes it just, yeah. Yeah. Anyways, moving anyway. along. We're, this is How much more wrestling th- stuff we got This to? is going on a long time. A lot longer than I thought it would. Well, aren't you going to break it up anyway? So Maybe. I don't okay. know. We'll see what happens. As well, now. So Gable and Benjamin become the number one contenders for the tag team Happy. championships, which Happy should have that. happened. If you look at the roster, they're by far the best tag team. Yeah. From besides the Usos and New Day, which yeah. they just need to kind of settle down right now because they've had a lot of matches. Yeah. But there's a new tag team that is showing up, and that's the Bludgeon Brothers. Harper and Rowan are back together with some Walking Dead type gimmick. I'm excited. You're excited for this. I'm very excited. Okay, please tell me why you're excited for this. No, I mean I'm okay. You know I'm gonna be honest with you. Rowan, uh, not too fond of him. Luke Harper is going to be the, in my opinion, I'm going to do it like this. Harper is going to be the Jeff Hardy. Rowan is going to be the Matt Hardy. People love Jeff. People are all right People don't realize how old Luke Harper is. He's old. It, well, but, but he still can do amazing things in the ring. Which is uh, another topic for another day, but he shouldn't be, he should not be doing flippy doos when he's a seven foot giant with but I'm he's just, Bruiser I'm, Brody who does Kalisto <laughs> moves, which he shouldn't be doing. But I'm just saying though, it's it's one of those elements where you put them together, man, that's a great, great tag team. Separate, Harper is a great wrestler, Rowan. Yeah. Jobber doesn't I mean Ro- Rowan is when they had the Wyatt family, he was always the guy taking the pin because they try to protect Harper and, and Bray Bray, Bray loses it up as it is. Yeah. So we'll just see how that happens. They never really gave a date, they just did kind of some generic promo yeah. about how they're going to take over and stuff like I that. Said, so, I said they screw Chad and Gable. I mean, Chad and Shelton. I mean, New Day has no, New Day ha- doesn't have anything to do. Yeah, but... But I, I, f- I feel like... You're going to have them start losing? But, yeah, New Day's gimmick is just kind of not burying the talent, but just kind of making fun of them. Yeah. And I would, I mean, I would love to see New Day kind of not break up, but kind of have one of them go off on a... Kind of the shield. Have one go off on a singles run and have the other two go off on a tag team because we can get to Baron Corbin... But Baron Corbin time. doesn't really have a champion, a uh, opponent at this point after AJ Styles. But Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens do their promo. Sami Zayn explains his heel turn, or as you you know, heel turn in quotes, because he actually had a good excuse for it. Because Kevin it's Kevin true. Owens is his, is his boy, even though they've gone through hell, they've kind of had their up and down. But you know, he, Kevin Owens has been there for him, and he didn't want to see Shane McMahon kill him, which. You know, great heel, great heel turns always have a great excuse, even though you don't agree with them. But I mean, him turning is, to my opinion, great. But it's how you utilize that turn. What's he gonna do right now? What is he doing? Is I he, don't know. Is he gonna go <laughs> attack? Oh, <God>, I'm dying. <laughs> I know. Oh, I'm holding it in. Um, no, uh, is he gonna go? Is he gonna be behind Kevin Owens the whole time now? Is he gonna go and? Does he get a championship match eventually? Does he go and what's he? What are they going to do with him? They have to give him purpose for this hill turn. Besides <laughs> just the fact, like, oh, he's my friend, and I don't want him to die. He needs purpose. Do you think what should they do with his uh, music? Should they change his music, or should they keep it the change way it is? It some heavy metal thunder. I mean, he no. came out with those happy-go-lucky music, and he's just nodding his head and kind of being over the top, which I understand, but I don't know if. You could do that all the time. Yeah, I don't. I don't, I don't know, know if that's something you can keep up with. I don't know, but there you go. Yeah. So, do you think they're gonna change? Do you th- okay? Should they? Should they? Yes. Should they? But will they? No. No. Uh, <coughs> maybe. I I think they should change it. It may if actually if anything just go with Kevin Owens' music. As I was gonna say, maybe he just walks out with him all the time. Yeah, just go with Kevin Owens' music, but you know, put Sami Zayn's font yeah. up on the Titan Tron and just. Because Kevin Owens has a great theme song where it can go either way because it's just a badass or you, song. Or you can just give Kevin Owens a new song and... No, Kevin Owens keep a song. Okay. Yeah. Whatever That's final. Think. So what do you think of... I mean, Kevin Owens talking about how he was at the gates of heaven, but they said, no, we're sending you back down. Shout out to the dog. <laughs> like a dog. Fucking <laughs> dog. Not big dog. Mini dog. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, nah, I... I'm surprised there's not a lot of uh, religious people out there trying to say anything about that. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. <laughs> you okay? Oh, God, I'm dying. 
<laughs> Take a break. We're falling, we're, we're falling break. apart right now. Take a break. This has I gone got on this. a lot longer than I thought it was going to. Also, I'm going through the names that we should have been named. Oh, you know, the, <laughs> shout out to all the people affected by the Napa fires. You know, stay strong, people. Make, a, make America Obama again. No. I mean, we're not going to get into that. We're not going to get all political. But Sorry. I know all this smoke over here in the Bay Area isn't helping my sickness right now. But anyways, AJ Styles and Baron Corbin, my brother, was watching SmackDown for the first time on, on a Saturday. Nice. A little, little behind, so I got to see this match again. It was actually it was a pretty good match. Yeah. AJ Styles basically lose clean the Baron Corbin, so Corbin is the rightful yep. champion. Yep. I don't understand why they put the, ta- the triple threat match at Hell in a Cell to kind of have AJ not lose, but then you put it on two days later to have AJ lose clean. Yeah, I mean, it's probably just one of those things where you have Ty Dillinger in the mix of it, so why are you going to leave him out? Let's just throw him in it. Yeah. Don't you go back to the plethora of talent that you're not utilizing? Smack, Ty Dillinger's smack, one smack of those people. Da- SmackDown's roster is, like, it's not top-heavy, but it's just, it's not very, it's not very strong. They're not... La- they're not layered people. like at, like after AJ Shinsuke Randy like yeah, who, yeah Rusev 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 losing to losing to Randy Orton again but I mean but it's one of those things where he's still I would consider him not a top talent he's, but almost out of top talent. I mean he's kind of like at that Bray Wyatt where he's always in those big matches and but he's just, but he's losing all the big matches yeah. so it doesn't really make him the big big yeah. guy I yeah. can say big dog anyways yeah what do you think Corbin goes from here with the U.S. title. I, I, w- I would like to see a feud with someone different. If, if it's, I, I, w- I would give it to Ty Dillinger, but he's already in that mix, so I don't know how much more they can do with him. I mean, I'm afraid they might go to that just because Ty pinned him so many times. But then, you know, you have Rusev, former United States champion. I think that would be another good... But that's a heel-heel matchup. Rusev is still a heel, technically. Yeah, Even but... Though everyone loves handsome Rusev. Happy Rusev Day to all you guys out there. <laughs> um, I'm, just one, I'm just one of those things where... Who else do they have? You gonna go to Shinsuke? I don't... I, I don't think so. I think, I think if you go from Shinsuke going from that to Corbin? I would love to see a Shinsuke-Rusev feud right now. Both of, both of those guys need a win, but Shinsuke... I think a Shinsuke-Rusev match could, would be pretty good. I don't know. I mean, I think they are going to go to Ty Ty Dill, Dill, blah, 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 blah. They're going to go to Ty Dillinger, and it's just one of those things where it's going to be maybe a, a three week feud, and then they're just going to drop it just like how they did with Nia Jax. They're going to go, yes, yes, yes. Okay, we there's nothing going on here. Screw it. I talked about the new day, maybe breaking off and doing maybe some the, singles run. Xavier Co- Co- Woods. Well, Kofi wasn't in the Hell in a Cell match. Maybe Xavier and Biggie gain some chemistry. They go off with the Bludgeon Brothers. And Kofi goes out to get a tag team, t- or the uh, U.S. title. So it's kind of like an Evolution thing, where Evolution held all the titles. Or the Shield. Where the Shield held all the titles. Fuck the Shield. Oh, man, I like the Shield, even though they're just putting the Shield together to get Roman over, because they're exactly. just putting every single thing to Roman to build them up to beat Brock Lesnar, and then once he beats Brock Lesnar and people still booing him, they have really no excuse after this. Wow. Goodbye. So, that's it for wrestling. Finally. Finally. I wrote down like a couple of things on the script, and I was like, "Oh, this." Eh, I'm going this, off on tangent. I thought this whole podcast was maybe gonna be like a half hour, but this was. Where, where are we at right now? I have no idea. I can't We're at 45 minutes just talking about wrestling. That's basically a bullet cast right there. And we talk about way more stuff on the bullet cast, but wow, you know, sometimes they just cut me off. I don't get to talk I'm all the time. You go, that's why. Yeah, you know, that's why me, I'm a good co-host. Let, I'm, well, I'm the host. I'm, I'm the, the big guy around here. So oh. we're gonna get to sports. Okay. And we're gonna actually talk about.